I'm sure there's going to be more to come and uh, uh, that, that want to participate in that. And please do and uh, talk to Brother Andrew about that. But that was a blessing for sure. And uh, I walked in and, and I felt like I was almost in a parade or something. I was walking in this, except everybody was clothed in the right mind. So it really wasn't like a parade, right? It was, it was, it was, it was beautiful, wasn't it? But uh, that's great. And I didn't, I didn't listen that closely. Was the piano playing at the same time or we were not doing that yet? Okay, but you're going to be working on that too. So we'll be doing that and incorporating all that in there and everything like that. So that's a blessing. Amen. And uh, uh, Paul said he plays this one thing that goes ding, ding, ding. What was that, Paul? Mouth harp. Mouth harp. I told him I'll blow on a bottle for him if he wants to do that. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the jug. <laughs> I told him I'm not, I'm not very artistic. I, I'm not, I just don't have it. Some people have it. Some people don't. I, some people can develop it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. What's that? Maracas. No. <laughs> We're going to talk about drums, incidentally, today. But not the kind of drums that, that you'd want to play, okay? Or, or like a marching beat it wasn't that or marching drum it's this is a little different here but we're going to talk about this today it's, it's interesting how this all comes together uh when it comes to satan's the the world of the devil and these fallen angels the giants and all these that comes together in a very scary way in that sense all right josh let's pray father in heaven lord bless us now as we look at this and we continue on with the giants and we learn them and understand about them and the lessons that you have for us thank you lord for this church thank you for the opportunities and thank you for the preaching and teaching of your word. Please, Lord, use it in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joshua 15, 8. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom. Now that is going to be interesting. Because this valley of the son of Hinnom, it, the border of it reaches up to the valley of the giants. There's something about that. When we talk about Hinnom, it's going to be interesting. We're going to do that here today. Uh, Joshua. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. So think about this, the valley of the son of Hinnom, and I'm going to show you the map, comes through there. Then you have the valley of the giants. All of that is like outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city that is the city of the great king, right? We know the new Jerusalem is going to come down from heaven. We also know that this Jerusalem that was inhabited uh, by in Hebron and in other places was inhabited by giants, right? We know that to be true as well. Okay, so Joshua chapter 15 tells us that. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants northward. Now, why was it called the valley of giants? Well, here's our map again. Land of the giants. You have, and, and um, you have here the kingdom of Og, the kingdom of, uh, of, of Sion. You have the, the, the Emims. You have, uh, let's see, uh, An the Anakims down here, Arba and Anak, all this whole area right here. So we have this, uh, you remember the Kidron Valley? Here's the Jabok River. You're going to see some of these names, Kirjath Arba, and all these other names are going to be in there. The valley appears to derive its name. This is from, uh, the, I think it's the International Encyclopedia, Standard Bible Encyclopedia, or Strong's and McClintock. I can't remember. I might have put the reference in there. Whoops. Um, we're going to get to that map in a second. The valley appears to derive its name from the ancient nation of the Rafahim, he says, which are basically the the giants before the flood i don't use that terminology anymore i used to i don't because the bible calls them giants when it literally deals with them it says giants we don't need to use these other terms i'm not saying it's a sin to use them but i'm just saying it's we don't need to really use them uh it may it may be a trace of an early settlement of theirs possibly after they were driven from the original seats East of the Jordan by Shedder Alomar. Remember that? When Shedder Alomar gathered together and he went off to battle, the king of Sodom and the king here and the king there. And remember when Abraham was, was in that whole mix there? And before they again migrated northward to the more secure wooded districts in which we find them at the date of the partition of the country among the tribes in Joshua chapter 17, verse number 15. So the giants eventually would be driven out to the woods. They'd be driven out and they would, be, they, they would be in the woods and in the mountainous areas and in the woods, and they'd be in there, and there's going to be a tribe that's going to have to go pluck them out of there, kill them, and take the land. 
But anyway, in, in this case, it is parallel to the Mount of the Amalekites in the center of Palestine and to the towns bearing the name of Zemaram, the Avum, the Ophanites, which occurs so frequently in Benjamin. Yeah, that is Strong's McClintock. Anyway, here's a map right here. This right here, this Valley of the Raphaim, that, that's the Valley of the Giants. This is somebody else's map, but it's from Bible Maps. And anyway, there, there's where it is. You see? Now, the Valley of the Giants, you basically had tribes of giants that, drew, that were driven through that valley. Okay? They, they, or they drove themselves through that valley and populated this whole area. So they, they, they just took over nations, or they created nations, or they went and became part of those nations, and everything else right there. But notice where it is. Here's the Mount of Olives. It, see, it's, it's all right around where Jesus was. It's all right around where the inheritance was given. Why? Because wherever you have the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you have the true church of the living God, you are going to have the devil and his crew right around that area. They're going to, so what happened? Israel was commanded to go into the land. They had to go through, here, here's the border of the land, was the Valley of the Giants and the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, which we're going to talk about. So all of this area was inhabited by giants at the time. So when you're thinking about them going into the land, you've got to think about the massive amounts of armies of giants that were there in that land that they had to kill in order to take the land. So it's very serious. It wasn't like it was... Uh, you know, one here or there, like we talked about this morning, it was, it was huge. And th this whole valley got its name from those giants because there were so many of them. And also it's connected to a lot of witchcraft because the valley of, we're going to show you that here in a second. Joshua 17, 15, and Joshua answered them. Uh, Joshua is talking to the tribe of Joseph who's complaining. They're complaining because they're like, we need more land. We're a big tribe. Why did you just give us one portion? And Joshua answered them, if thou be a great people, well, look, if you're as great as you say you are, right, then get thee up to the wood country and cut down. Lee's like, I got a chainsaw. I can do that. I like chainsaws. They didn't have any chainsaws, Lee. Get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. If it ain't enough land, then get up there and fight those giants. They're all up there in the wood country. That's where they're at. You go up there and fight them, what happened? They draw, all the tribes drove those giants away, so they went hiding. And they just settled up in that wood country, right? They settled, and Ephraim said, well, look, we don't have enough. We don't have enough room. And then, of course, they started to kind of whine about that a little bit. Uh, because they said, well, they have chariots of iron. And, and Joshua told them, you'll be able to destroy them. Why? Because God gave them the commission to. You know, you and I are victorious, not because of who we are, but because of who Christ is. We're victorious because God's the one that's commanded victory upon our lives. It's not because of your strength. Would you just get over yourself and realize that it never was about that? So many people struggle with that because they come back to the place where, well, I don't know if I can do this. Well, of course you can't do it. Why did you ever think you could do it? It's God that does it in us. God says for us to put on uh, the whole armor of God. Right? By what? By the power of his might. Right? You, you don't put it on by yours. When, you, when you're battling against things, when you're battling the devil, when you're battling against the flesh, the world, and the devil, you're not doing it in your own strength. The reason for your victory is never you. It's always Christ. It's always, it's always the power of his might. That's what you always have to come back to. That's what God's always going to bring, bring you to is that place where you realize it's the power of his might. It isn't you. It never was you. But most of the time, we, we start to get drunk on our own, our own um, viewpoint of ourselves. We really do get big-headed and proud, and we kind of think that we've arrived or that we're, that we're doing pretty good. And when we do that, not that we're not supposed to be positive about life, not that we're not supposed to be thankful and we're not supposed to... Um, live our lives in, in, in a positive way, because we are. But what the, what the Bible is teaching us is that all of our dependence must be on Christ. 
By the way, when any grievous trial that you go through, any challenge that you have, anything else is to drive you to Christ. There is no other purpose for it in the Christian's life. There's, don't look for another purpose. In your mind, you're going to say, well, God's just punishing me. No, God chastens his children. Right? And he does it that they would be partakers of his holiness. He does it to make them more like Jesus. He's not doing it like to pun to, because he enjoys afflicting you. He's not doing it because God's getting a thrill out of it. He's not doing it because you made him mad, so he's going to get you back. That's not the God of the Bible. Your dad might have been like that, and your dad might have beat you when you were a kid because he just didn't like what you did, because you just annoyed him, or you just were an inconvenience to him. or you just, So he may have treated you like that. People in your life may have treated you like that, but that's not how the God of the Bible is. That's not the love of God. The love of God is when God chastens you, it's to teach you, it's to make you a partaker of his holiness. That's why God's doing it. He's doing it to try your faith. Not to tell you you don't have any. Amen. So where did these post-flood giants come from? We reviewed a little bit of this, but we'll talk about it. Genesis 6, 4 says there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. So this is the part that we remember. And also after that. I believe that's this time. Or that's the time of, the, uh, of Canaan. The giants that populated Canaan. Okay. I believe that's the and also after that. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children, then the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. This indicates, in my opinion, that it happened again. That it was not only the original time, but there was another time that this took place. But it was smaller, and it was on a local level, and it was for a purpose. What was the purpose? To populate Canaan with giants so when the Israelites came in, they could not take the land. Right? That was the purpose. Now, we talked about this earlier. Here's, here's some of my thoughts on this, and I'll show you some scripture for this, why I believe this, and some other things that are connected with the Valley of Giants, with the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, and a few other things. Arba, we talked about him this morning. Arba was a great man. He was the father of Anak. Arba has never said that he was a giant. It never says it anywhere. But he fathered giants. And then the sons after the sons of Anak were, or the sons of Anak were giants. Right? But it never says Arba was. It just says he was a great man among the Anakims, right? The other ones all, it says that they were men, right? It, say, or it says, excuse me, it says they were giants. Arba says he was a great man. I believe that most of these gods that are represented here, that these, these tribes worshipped, or in, in these countries worshipped, and nations in the land of Canaan, I believe that they were all fallen angels. I believe that, they, that that's who they worshipped. They worship fallen angels. Uh, take, for instance, Milcom is one of them. Chemosh is one of them. And one of the most famous ones is Moloch. Moloch is one of the most famous of those, of those creatures. Uh, and whenever Moloch is depicted, which we'll get to, uh, there's some interesting things about that. We'll, I'll show you that. But anyway, that's four. And I'll tell you why I think that in a second. But we'll keep going here. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom. Okay. This, this guy is an interesting fellow. This valley of the son of Hinnom is a very nasty, dirty, filthy, satanic place. I mean, if you, in all of the area of Israel, this is the most wicked place in all of Israel, in all of near Palestine and all near the, the land of Canaan. This place, the valley of the son of Hinnom, is the most wicked place ever. And it continued to be the most wicked place for a very long time. In fact, through all the kings, through all the kings, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom was a wicked place. Remember, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom connects with the Valley of the Giants. And the border went up by the Valley of the Son of Hinnom under the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up by the top of the mountain that lieth before the Valley of, the, of Hinnom, westward, which is at the end of the Valley of the Giants, northward. So there's something happening in this area. And it's concentrated and it is wicked. And it's basically a place where all apostate Israel, all the tribes, all of those people went to worship false gods. Why? Why that place? Okay, some things about Hinnom. Hinnom is mentioned 13 times in the King James Bible. Not an accident, right? 13 times. 
The Valley of the Giants and the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, they connect devil activity, devilish activity, and child sacrifice filled this area. We're going to talk about that child sacrifice a little bit because it's all connected. By the way, think about it this way. The sons of God come into the daughters of men, right? They bear them children, right? Those children are uh, giants that come about. Okay, well, don't you find it interesting? Or it's sick, but I just say that. Ironic, I guess you could say, that... These people that worship Moloch and these other gods, they are sacrificing their babies to these gods in this area right here that we're talking about. And I'll show you that area in a little while. But in that area, now, now think about this for a second. What did God do to the children of those sons of God and daughters of men? What did God do to them? He killed them. What do these devil-possessed people do with their children? They sacrifice them to those gods and they kill them. That's what they do. 2 Kings 23, this is the same area. 2 Kings 23, verse 10. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Moloch. I'm telling you, this God Moloch, this false God here, which I believe was a fallen angel, this false God right here is worshipped more than any right there. Baal is a generic name for Satan, basically, for any false God. It's basically a generic name. This is a specific name. These are specific names, all right? So you have Moloch here, right? And you have in the, in the valley of the children of Hinnom right here. What were they doing? Israel... That were the apostate Israelites were taking their children out here and sacrificing them to false gods. Second Chronicles 28.3, moreover. By the way, this, the man who defiled Topheth, which is in the valley, that was the good king, right? That's what he did. He, he uh, defiled their high places, right? He defiled Topheth, right? Uh, he defiled it. Second Chronicles 28, 3. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. This is Manasseh. And burnt his children in the fire. You think this is bad and this doesn't go on, but it goes on every day in, in, in St. Paul. Planned Parenthood. It goes on. Every, we are a pagan nation. The same exact thing. Legalized. Murdering of children right there in St. Paul. And don't they burn them too? Don't they burn them in the incinerator? Don't they? Don't they? You know, don't they? After they sell their body parts that they can make money off of. Or they can, you know, use for their genetic testings. Oh, now, come on. How is it any different? How is it any different? It is no different, is it? It's the same exact thing. Okay, look what it says here. After the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Remember those giants? What happened? God cast them out. God killed them. What are these guys doing? Sacrificing to their gods. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Here's your Christmas tree. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> you hypocrites. <laughs> the Valley of the Raphim, the Valley of the Giants right here, right? So in this area, Topheth. It's sometimes called Topheth. Topheth, right? Let me show you something about that. Jeremiah 19.6. I think I have it in there. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Right? There it is. That's the valley of slaughter. You know, God's going God's gonna to be finished with America burning babies. You know that, right? Killing their own children, murdering their own offspring. Right? God's going to cause armies of invasion to come in into this country do you okay let, let me let, let me let me let you think about this for a second okay 
Let me tell you some things that I, that, that I believe. This is, this is some things that I, that I believe. I'm not right wing. I'm not left wing. I'm flying on God's wings. Okay? That's who I am. Okay? I, I, why? Because I think they're all liars. I, I don't trust any of them. I trust what this book says. I do not trust those people. So you have all this illegal immigration that's coming in and all this other stuff, right? By the way, the Bible says we're to be good to the stranger also. So we got to be careful about that, having the right spirit about that. But let me tell you this. But let me tell you this, though. Our, uh, criminals and all kinds of crazy things are being invi invited into this country, pouring over the borders and doing all those things. But you know what it is? It's the judgment of God. Right? It's the judgment of God, right? Isn't it? Do you think that you can, do you think that you, by the way, by the way, here's the other thing. America has been going over killing brown people in the sand for years. Invading other nations, right? Like you have, right now, you have people, you have people right now that are more worried about the Ukrainian border than they are their own border in that sense. Think about that. They have no problem crossing over other people's borders and invading their sovereignty, right? But they're mad because people are invading, uh, they're mad because people are invading ours. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's all hypocritical is what it is if you think about it. It's, that's what it's, but listen, you can't kill your own people and kill other people and expect that God's not going to judge you, but nobody will want to accept that, right? Cause that would mean that you wouldn't be a part of the Republican party or the Democrat party and you wouldn't agree with their party lines and you wouldn't follow suit with all of them. And you'd be like, you're all a bunch of liars. You know why I make a lot of people mad? You know why there's not, well, you do kind of know, but why there's not some people, why some people will never come to this church. There's a number of reasons, but, but you know why? Because of the positions that we hold here. Some of those are the fact that I don't buy into the party lines and I'm very vocal about not believing any of these people. Like I'm very, like I'm very vocal about, like, I don't, I don't believe any of them. Like, I, I think they're all lying and everybody's like, and during election time with like Trump and all these other, they're, they're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why? They're all liars. I mean, they're, but one's a better liar than the other. Oh, okay. All right. Whatever. Probably so, I guess. Right? Probably so. Right. <laughs> oh, wait, that was both of them. Okay, so this is Topheth, right? We, we, you saw where that is, right? Right here? Topheth? Same thing as Topheth. It's spelled differently sometimes. Here's what it means. Look what it means. Hell. <laughs> That's what it means. Look. Hell. So called from a place east of Jerusalem where children were burnt to Moloch and where drums were used to drown their cries. Do you understand that? They used drums to beat while they were burning their babies alive. Right? That, we're not, I mean, we're not that far off of that now. Like here. We distract people all the time from the killing that's going on of our own babies in America. Right? And it's, it's being done... How many a year is it? 4,000. Four is that just the United States? Yes. 4,400 plus a day. Right. This nation is this. We beat the drum. How do we beat the drums? Oh, you just get half naked people on television to dance around and sing music while they're dancing to African voodoo beats and, the, and, and half naked people. And then, and then coliseums full of football last week where the, where the most major trafficking of children and prostitution and everything else takes place, right? And you just beat the drum a little bit louder. Beat it a little louder. Beat it a little louder, right? So what does it do? They're the same. They're doing the same thing. It's all paganism. You have coliseums full of men that are running around, and that's and that's what the, or you have the Olympics over in China, where China is murdering more people than we are, which is a surprise. But China is murdering more people than we are over there and laughing about it. And they have the Olympics there, and everybody's whitewashing and acting like nothing's nothing's wrong. Why? Because they're pagan. Because the world's pagan. But that same thing is going on right there. So think about this. 
So here's a depiction of Moloch, right? Here's a, here's a man, which I could hardly call him a man, right? That's offering its baby to this burning belly, whose God is their belly, right? Who's offering this, this baby to this burning, to this uh, brass statue of Moloch. Notice how big it is too, by the way. This is, that child's sacrifice was going on in the valley of the, what does that have to do with the giants? It's in the valley of the giants, in the valley of the son of Hinnom. These false gods permeated, why was Moloch so popular? Because he was a fallen angel. And the sacrifices are the things that they were doing. Right? Hell, that's really what it is. Think about that for a second. They called that area hell, right? Um, and some people, uh, Jesus would point to that area, right? But Jesus was talking about a literal hell also. But he was, he was pointing to those area, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, which we'll show you some interesting facts about that in a little while. But he was pointing to that and he was warning men about hell. He was showing them that that's a depiction, that's a, just like a fire is a picture, just like the sun is a picture, right? Just like fire is a picture of hell, right? It's a picture that, 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 that where the worm dieth not. You know, make sure you're saved. Make sure you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make sure you've called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Make sure you've done that. Make sure that you believe the gospel, right? Because hell is real. And Jesus left us with an example of that over and over again, where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. Hell is real and sinners really go there. And every man in this room, a woman and child in this room within 100 years is going to die for sure, more than likely. None of us are going to make it past 100 years unless Jesus comes back and takes us home first. Amen. But within 100 years, all of us are going to be dead. It's more than likely, right? And what the only thing that's going to matter is is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Have you been saved by the grace of God? Have you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? And if you have, believe God. Believe the promises of God. Believe, it. believe Him for His work's sake. Believe what He said. You have no right. God's never, God has never failed anyone. Right? Jesus said He hasn't lost any. Save the son of perdition who was appointed unto it by his own sin. Jeremiah 32, verse 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are, look, in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Picture of hell right there. To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. God said it never came into his mind. Look at this. It never came into God's mind to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. No, you know what was in God's mind? To send his son to die on the cross for your sins and to be buried and to rise again from the dead. God sent his own son. It never came into his mind for you to burn your son alive. He sent his son to die for your sins. Amen. Amen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. That's the promise of God, isn't it? Right there. Look at that. But that valley of the son of Hinnom is where they were doing that. God calls it an abomination. You know what? That, we, that's what God calls abortion. It's an abomination. It's murder. Right? It's abomination. It's an abomination. Thou shalt not kill. You know, somebody else had a part in the valley of the son of Hinnom. I think it's interesting. Acts chapter 1. Same place where the valley of the giants was. Same place where the valley of the son of Hinnom was. Acts 1 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake 
before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of his, this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, and so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, Alkadama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishop prick let another take. Okay, so here we find Judas Iscariot hung himself. That field, field of blood, that field, Akadam, is right in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Nobody wanted that land. That's why they bought that desolate field. That's why they bought it, because nobody wanted to be there. That's where Judas went out and hung himself. Right there. That same place. See, by the way, that self-murder is the same thing, that thou shalt not kill. That's a sin, right? Attempting to kill yourself is a sin, right? The thoughts of foolishness is sin. Thinking on those things is sin. By the way, listen, friend, do yourself a favor. The minute any, any of those thoughts ever come into your mind, you obey the scriptures, you cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You cast it down right at why? Because the thought of it is sin. The thought of it is sin. To think on it is sin. Amen. I'm serious. If you cast that down, you'll never attempt that. You'll never get that far. It's like the thoughts of adultery or fornication or perversion. If you cast those thoughts down, you'll never get to the doing of it. So cast them down as Jesus said. All sin begins in the mind and the heart. For out of the heart are what? Evil thoughts. So what's evil thoughts? All the rest. <laughs> evil thoughts are all of those thoughts that are against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that exalt themselves above the knowledge of Jesus. By the way, that also includes evil surmising against people. All of those things are evil thoughts. Right? Let me, let me, let me warn you of something. Think about this, too. When, when Jesus talks about those evil thoughts, he's talking about evil surmisings, right? He talks about that. But what he's telling you is, is to cast those down right away. Why? Because when you start thinking about those things, you'll act upon those things. By the way, you'll judge people out of what you think you know about those people. You know how much of a sin that is? You know how wicked that is? You know how much God hates that? So in other words, you're not asking somebody or you're not praying about it or you're not giving somebody the benefit of the doubt out of your own diseased mind, okay, or, you know, if you have anxiety or anything like that or a negativity bias, you're creating an image about somebody that you don't even know is true and you're believing it about them. That's sin. That's why you're supposed to cast it down. Did you know that not everybody needs to know what you think about something or someone? Did you know that's very um, foolish to share those things with people? I spent four years of my, three years of my life specifically, four probably more than likely, but well, no, probably, yeah, probably four years. Four years of my life with the scariest thoughts in the world going through my brain. The absolute worst thoughts ever. And you know what? I did not share them with anyone but God. I did not tell anyone. Why? Because they didn't need to know it. Because you know what God showed me? Now, if you say any of these things, and none of these things are true, and none of these things are real, and you follow any of these things that, you're dream that your mind is dreaming up, you're going to hurt people. You're going to damage relationships. I was pastoring people. I could have destroyed them. So what did I do? Took it to God. What should you do? Take it to God. 
People don't need to know everything you think or feel. I've heard people make statements like this, and I always correct it as soon as I hear it. I feel like you think. You can't feel what I think. And I can't feel what you think. And I'm not even supposed to be trying. You ever tried to feel what a woman thinks? You're insane. Right. What, can I read your mind? You can't read a woman's mind. Are you insane? Maybe. But you, you, can't, you can't read a woman's mind. Right. Right. He's over there with his javelin getting ready. And what did the Bible say? He was influenced by an evil spirit. You know, you better make sure that you, that's why the Bible says, try the spirits, whether they're of God. Don't believe everything you think. Please don't believe everything you think. And don't tell people what you think all the time. They don't need to know it. Right. They don't need to know that. You'll just hurt people. What's the point in that? Oh, I had bad thoughts about so-and-so. Well, don't tell them. Tell God. They can't handle it, but God can. And ask God to fix you. That's how you build relationships. Not by tearing people down. You don't do that like that. Not by telling them everything you thought in your brain. Because, boy, I'll tell you what. You know what the Lord showed me? I was wrong about a lot of things. I just sat back and didn't say anything and let time go by. And then God showed me. I'm like, boy, I'm glad I didn't say that. 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 Thank God I didn't say that. Right? That's what happens when people have anxiety and negativity biases and things like that. Be careful about your imagination. Judas here, the Bible talks about in this area, his bowels gushed out. Judas killed himself. Cast down those thoughts. Cast down imaginations and every high thing. Right? So we know that the, the, we know the Genesis 6 sons of God were chained up, right? We understand that. So we're, we're, we're wondering, how did, those, how did Canaan get populated with giants? The Bible speaks of another group of angels which were bound. The only time angels are bound is due to heinous sin. Usually it's sexual sins, right? These four angels, this is a depiction of four angels. You say they look like they have long hair. They're kind of blurry. I know the picture's bad, but, but um, they, they look like they have long hair. Well, they are fallen. <laughs> so, anyway, Revelation 9.14. The Bible tells us in Revelation 9.14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Well, what in the world were they bound for? And where is the river Euphrates? That's important. I believe God bound them right where they sinned. That's where he bound them. Right there. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man. When those chains come off of them, they are going to be mad. Why? Well, they were enslaved because of what they did to man. And they have a revenge on men. And they're going to take their revenge on men. Right? Right? The river Euphrates, okay? Look at this. If you see this, uh, the river Euphrates, it comes all the way through this area. So it goes down to Babylon. Okay, so think about that, right? We know that the river Euphrates came out of what? The great river Euphrates came out of the Garden of Eden, right, at one time? We don't know what changed about that after the flood. We don't know all those things. But notice this. It goes, you're going through Assyria, Mesopotamia, uh, Nineveh. Cal so, so you have... You have Nimrod's kingdom. You have all these areas of that great, the river Euphrates. I don't know if I put that in there. Did I? Yeah. 1,780 miles is how big the great river Euphrates is, right? Huge. Biggest one. Four angels, the Bible says, are bound there right now. And why are they bound there? Well, I believe because they populated Canaan. I believe they populated Canaan with, with uh, giants. Every place, Deuteronomy 11, 24, notice this. Every place wherein the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the utmost sea shall your coast be. So those, 
They knew it. They knew what the coast, they knew where the borders were going to be of Israel. Those fallen angels, they knew exactly where it was going to be, right? Joshua 1, 4 says, From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even under the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coasts. This whole area was Israel's. And the great river Euphrates was one of those boundaries. So there are four angels that are bound in there for a time. Here's another theory. Man, that guy looks tall. And he has a pointy hat. It's like a horn on his head, right? But that horn is to conquer, right? That's what it stands for. This is a depiction of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. This is another theory that people have. I'm not so much sold on this theory. I used to think that it could be possible, uh, but I'm, I'm not so much sold on it. The reason why is because when you trace Nimrod's, I think I, let me see if I, yep. Here is li Nimrod's lineage. We know Nimrod's lineage, right? And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as, as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Achad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Same place Abraham came from, by the way, right? Same area which is very interesting, very. There's a lot that could be said about that, but not now. We might save that for another time, or we will save that for another time. But Cush begat Nimrod. There's no indication that there was any giant activity anywhere in that bloodline. However, we don't have time to talk about with what really was going on in, in, in Babylon, but we'll talk about that when we talk about the Tower of Babel, because there was a lot going on. Uh, Babylon was called the Gateway of the Gods. Right? That's what the Tower of Babel was called. That whole that area was. There was some weird stuff going on in Babylon. Definitely some weird stuff. And Nimrod was the first real after the flood. Nimrod was the first Antichrist figure. And boy, was he. Uh, but we'll talk about him at another time. But the point is that when you think about it is some people had said that, well, maybe because his name means Gabor. Okay, his name mighty means Gabor, which is the same as a giant. So maybe Nimrod was a giant. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think, I used to think that was a possibility, but I don't see that because I see the lineage of him and I don't believe that the, the scriptures don't indicate that. Okay. So I really think that the right answer to how the post flood giant, uh, land of Canaan was populated with giants are those four that are bound in the river Euphrates. I believe that, um, the, uh, the three that we mentioned back there, Chemosh and those other gods, Moloch and Arba and those four, more than likely some mixture of them. Who knows if their names remain the same when they change to different tribes or whatever. I believe those are more likely. That's more likely because that's how it happened the first time. And it says, and also after that. Was there a bunch of witchcraft in Babylon? Oh, you bet. Is there a lot more going on in Babylon than what people understand or really get? Yes, and we'll talk about that sometime. But I don't believe that's where the giants actually came from. Yep. Well, you mentioned a total of four tribes of giants. Yeah. Demons, the demons, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Four angels. Four angels bound, right. So there's, there's, there's some good indication. And also the Valley of the Son of Hinnom mixed in with the Valley of the Giants, the child sacrifice that's going on there. Everything, God said, it's everything that I hate. That's what they were doing. They pretty much, it's like Manasseh. Manasseh, how can I make God mad more than anyone ever has? Let me just run out and do the complete opposite of what he commanded me to do as a king. And that's what he did. And that's how he made God angry, right? He did the opposite of what God had commanded. So I used to, uh, you know, I used to teach this theory as, as probably a possibility or, or, or the theory that, that, that's, that could be what, it, what happened. But I don't really, I, I, I'm not, it just doesn't seem as solid after I've done more studying about it. It really doesn't seem like it's as solid, right? As, as that. I really believe that the four angels that were bound in the river Euphrates are probably the ones that populated that area of Canaan. And it was localized. It wasn't as big as it was over the whole world. And I do not think that these giants post-flood were as big as pre-flood giants. I believe the pre-flood giants were quite a bit bigger. And the reason for that is 
number one, the earth, the oxygen level, the way that the earth, the world was at that time, probably it could be argued that there were, men may have been bigger. But some people think that the dimensions of the ark would prove that they possibly weren't that big. But uh, anyway, so I, I believe that's the answer for the population of that area. Now, there are more giants that we're not going to talk about today. Those giants are found in David's kingdom. When David mounts, when David takes the throne, David, basically his whole life, his whole career of his mighty men, they fight giants throughout the land of Canaan still, throughout the land of Israel, I should say. They, they, David is going to fight, his, his mighty men are going to fight giants. They're going to they're gonna have quite a few. Uh, we'll talk a lot about Goliath. And, and by the way, here's some of the things about giants that, that I didn't put in here, but we should, we should talk about quickly. One of those things is that they're always evil. So you never see in the scriptures a good giant. You never see one. It's never talked about a good giant anywhere. They always hate God's people. Look, the first thing that David, what happened to David? David walks onto the scene, and we'll talk about this next week, but David walks onto the scene. All he's doing is delivering some food to his brothers. And he looks over, and here's this huge giant that, and David automatically just wanted to kill him. He's like, I just want to kill him. I just, I just want, to, I, I want, I want to kill him right now. Like, why are you guys standing around? Let's kill him. Yeah, he was like, yeah, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, right? He was, D David, what, and what did Goliath want to do? Well, you puny little runt. He wanted to kill all of Israel, and he defied the God of Israel. They always hate God. They always do. Always hate him. They are always listed as not being like men. They are different. Their descriptions are, that are given about them are different than men. Um, we never see a saved giant in the Bible, okay? We never see one that turns to God, turns to the God of Israel. We never see any of those things. Do you, do you think possibly one of the reasons why God hates giants so much is because it's a mockery of the things that are evil? Yes, I think that's a good reason. Uh, it's a mocking of, of uh, right, the sons of God, daughters of men is a mocking of the virgin birth, right? It's a mocking of... God manifest in the flesh, which is what the goal was. One of the goals of Canaan was, one of the goals always has been to pervert the seed. That was one of the goals. That's why they did what they did. Also, the other thing that it explains, like we talked about earlier, is why God wiped out all of those tribes of giants. That's why he wiped Canaan of all that. That's why he did that, because of them, because they were hybrids, and they were direct rebellion to God. And they hated God. And they would teach Israel to sin. But Israel didn't even have a chance to dwell with them because they hated Israel right away. Because they were the chosen people of God. Right? They hated, those giants hated Israel right away. Right away. There was automatic hate there. So you, those, those kind of things and the understanding of those help us understand who this group was and why they kind of give us a picture of understanding. When we get in next week, we'll get into more Christology because David is a type of Christ and what David did to fight the giants and, you know, his men, his mighty men that fought them. Uh, there, there's a lot of interesting pictures there and a lot of, lot of explanation of giants. So there were still, think about that, you, you're having hundreds of years that go by, right? And there's still giants in the land. They were not gone, right? 